Welcome to Highline Excel 2016 video number seven. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 218, video seven, and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, last video, video number six, we talked all about making calculations with conditions or criteria. Now, in Excel 2016, if you have Office 365 and you've signed up for the automatic updates, or you're in any version after 2016, we have two new great functions, min ifs and max ifs. Now, last video, we talked about what to do when you have an aggregate calculation with conditions or criteria, and there's not a built-in function. We can simply string if functions together with an array calculation. And we did a couple examples of that. So before this new function, if we wanted to do min with multiple conditions, no problem. We combined the two, did an array formula, and used Control-Shift-Enter. Same with max, if function, array operation, and Control-Shift-Enter. Ah, but in 2016, if you have the min ifs, watch this. This is simply amazing. There it is. The if, of course, means we can have conditions for a min calculation. And the S means you can have one or more conditions. Now, earlier versions of Excel always had duplicate functions for aggregate functions with the if, like sum if, and then there was also a sum ifs. But now moving forward, Microsoft realizes they do not need the straight min if without the S because the S can do everything. It can do one calculation or one or more. All right, so tab. Min range, we're looking through the sales. Control Shift down arrow F4, comma, no if or anything. We just put the criteria range just like we learned with count ifs and sum ifs. So I'm going to start with product. Control Shift down arrow F4. Now I do a comma, and there's the criteria one. I match the criteria one with criteria range since we're looking through products. Here's our row header. Now we need to lock this. As we move across the columns, it needs to be locked on G. But when we copy it down, it needs to move to 6 and then 7. So I hit the F4 key 1, 2, 3 times. Lock the column, but not the row. Comma. Criteria range 2, it's going to be sales rep. Control Shift down arrow F4. Comma. And there's criteria 2. Up arrow, there's Sue. I need to lock it when I copy down, but not when I copy to the side, because I need to move to Joe and then Chuck. So I hit the F4 key one, two times. Lock the row, but not the column. And that's it. No array formula. Close parentheses. I'm going to use Control Enter. There's no curly brackets. This is an automatic built-in function, just like sum ifs and count ifs. Double click and send it down. Copy it over. Go to the diagonally furthest one away. F2, and there we go. The cell references are working. Now, max ifs is going to have the same exact range here, except for instead of min ifs, it'll be max ifs. So watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy this cell, paste it down here. Right now, it's giving me the min. Not only that, but when I put it in edit mode, notice that the one cell reference that's not right is H4. So I'm going to point to the corner. And with my move cursor, I'm going to click and drag down to Sue. Then I'm going to get rid of the M-I-N and put M-A-X. And there it is. There's max ifs. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Copy it over. Go to the last cell and hit F2. And sure enough, look at that. It's got all the right ranges and cell references. So max ifs and min ifs. Make conditional calculations when you're trying to find the max or min much easier than earlier versions. Now let's go over and we want to talk about another amazing new function in 2016 or later, the ifs. Now the ifs, that's the if function with an s, will allow us to list multiple logical tests and multiple results without nesting multiple if functions like we had to do in earlier versions. When you have to use this is when you have not one of two things to put into a cell like the if function, but it's one of three or one of four. You're selecting amongst more than two items of something you want to put into the cell based on logical tests. 
Now, I want to look at this situation here. This is a common situation. We have an income statement. And net income is simply F2, revenue minus expenses. Now, one of the conventions in accounting is that we have the word profit or net income over here. But when the revenues become less than the expenses and I hit Enter, we do not want to show the number as a negative. We want to show it as a positive and then indicate that it's a negative by changing the label to something like loss or net loss. So we have to fix this formula. And then we're going to add a nested if to show you how we did it in earlier versions to either put profit, loss, or break even. And then we'll see how to do it with the new function. Well, fixing this one is easy because we're always going to get the same number, but it'll either be negative or positive, we use the ABS function. That shows the absolute value. That means the distance from 0. So if it's minus 5,000, that's 5,000 away from 0. If it's positive 5,000, that's also 5,000 away from 0. So that will solve that problem. Now over here, and I'm going to change this back to 50,000. And sure enough, that is working right there. Now we come over here, and we have not one of two things we need in the cells. We have one of three things, profit, loss, or break even. So I'm going to start by saying equals if, and we're going to do it the old way first. Logical test. Now I'm going to choose to check if revenue is greater than expenses. If revenues are greater than expenses, I type a comma, and the value, if true, is going to be in double quotes, profit, in double quotes, comma. Now, the rule when you're using if and nesting if functions together is when you get to the value of false, if there's still more than one thing we can put in the cell, then you have to nest if. So now I do a second if. And now the logical test, I'm going to check to see if there's a loss. So I'm going to say if expenses are greater than revenue, comma. If that comes out true, then I want loss in double quotes, comma. Otherwise, notice this is if, if. And in the if function, there's a value if false. When we learn the new function ifs with an s, there is no value if false. But here, value of false, that means if we didn't have a profit or a loss, what's left? In double quotes, break even in double quotes. Now we have to close parentheses. And notice our parentheses is not black. Close parentheses. You keep putting parentheses till you see your black one. Now we're done. We hit Enter. And now it's a profit. Now we're going to check all three situations, 40,000. And boom, I have a positive number here, but the sign is indicated by the label. And now when I have exactly 45,000, boom, there's that little accounting dash. That's number formatting, of course. And there's break even. All right, so let's see how to do this formula with the new ifs. I'm going to do equals ABS, and I'm going to take Revenue minus expenses. And I'm actually going to change this back to 50,000. All right, let's check this out. Equals ifs. And there it is. There's an if with an s. Logical test one, value if true one. If we keep putting new logical tests and value if true, we will never get to that value if false. All right, let's try this. Logical test, I'm going to say, hey, when revenue is greater than expenses, there's logical test one, comma, value of true one. This is going to be in double quotes, profit, in double quotes, comma. And there it is, logical test two. And by the way, we can do this in any order we want, right? I'm going to say, hey, when this is a loss, so expenses have to be greater than our revenue, comma. Value if true, two, in double quotes. We got a loss, in double quote. Finally, here's our last value. It doesn't say value of false. It says, hey, give me the other test. Now, the other test is, hey, expenses are exactly equal to revenue, comma. Then the value if true, three, in double quotes, break even, in double quotes. Close parentheses, and that will do the same thing as our nested if up here. 
If I change this, we've got to test all three. I'm going to check to see if revenues less than expenses gives us a loss. Yes, and 5,000. Greater. Exactly correct. And then 45. And then we're going to be optimistic. Hey, look at that. Our revenues were 75,000, so our profit should be 30,000. Now, there is one caveat. Since there is no value if false, if you want to default value, you actually have to do something kind of strange here. You'd have to put a just type true here. So if it runs through all of the previous logical tests and it gets to this one, it'll just say true, and then you put a default value. Now, we're not going to go through that in this video. If you want to see a comprehensive video about this new function, here it is, Excel Magic Trick 1286, Excel 2016 ifs. All right, next video, we're actually going to start talking about text functions and date functions before we jump into lookup functions. All right, we'll see you next video.